All right, what's going on, everybody? Brian Zimmerman here, executive editor of Jazz's Magazine and host of Jazz's Live, coming to you, of course, on our favorite day of the week. That would be Miles Monday, the day we celebrate all things Miles Davis with uh, my loyal and exciting and, you know, everybody's favorite co-host, Vince Wilburn. That would be Miles Davis's nephew, Vince Wilburn, an amazing drummer in his own right. He is going to be on the show uh, here to celebrate Miles, and so too is our special guest, and that would be John Beasley. So John is a Grammy-nominated pianist, composer, arranger, conductor, and musical director. The guy is everywhere. Chances are, if there was a major jazz program taking place in uh, his hometown of LA, or anywhere in the world, really, John Beasley was involved. You could probably find his name somewhere in the credits. Uh, he music directs for International Jazz Day, uh, you know, which I've attended several around the world. The guy is really, he's a global phenomenon. He's composed and arranged for films and television shows. Uh, John Beasley is the man. And of course, his most important credit for today is that he loves Miles Davis. In fact, he has played with Miles Davis. He was the one-time keyboardist in Miles Davis's group. Um, and yeah, he's also currently the band leader of his ensemble, uh, The Monkestra, in which he reimagines the work of Thelonious Monk. Uh, his latest album with that group is called Monkestra Plays John Beasley, so it's a little bit of a twist on the original recipe. Um, he worked a lot of his own original compositions in there, in addition to interpretations of Monk, of course, and Bird. It's a really, really great album uh, coming out on Mac Avenue Records. Anyway, they are both here to, again, celebrate the life, the legacy of Miles Davis. So let's go ahead and bring them both in. Here are Vince Wilburn Jr. and John Beasley. Hey, you guys there? Yeah. Hey, man. Hello, hey, Brian. Hello. Hey. What's up, <laughs> What's V? Up, guys? V. 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 He's killing me. And he plays with the Miles Electric Band when I can afford. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I'm telling you, the guy does it all. The guy does it all. I, I, I'm saying, if there's a major jazz concert anywhere on this planet <laughs> and it's being filmed, chances are John Beasley is involved, man. So thank you for being on the show. It's a pleasure to be talking with you. Nice to talk to you, too. And uh, I've been enjoying y'all's other episodes. Oh, nice thanks, man. Here. Thanks. You're joining us from Las Vegas, right? Or Los uh, Angeles, I'm sorry. West Coast. Yeah, I live in L.A. Well, you are based now. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, again, we're getting geography uh, you know, into the picture here because people watching, we want to know where you are watching from as well. Uh, feel free to say hi to Vince, to John. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know if you've ever seen John in concert, Vince in concert, Miles in concert. Feel free to write us in. Let us know if you have a question. Like I said, for either one of our guests, we'll try to get to it by the end of the show. But uh, Vince, again, thanks for being on the show, man. We'll start with, you know, the subject of the day, obviously, Miles Davis, because I would love to hear more about your time playing with Miles. You talk about my time or bees, killer bees? Killer bees. Okay. Well, um, I guess it was back in the, uh, man, this was like the late 80s, Vince. Holy yeah, cow, yeah. man. We, we was, we, I was seven and you were eight. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So I used to, so I used oh, to I have this board. I was just a twinkle in my parents' eye. Yeah, well, it happens fast, man. You'll be <laughs> catching up soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, I used to be in this band with Vinny Caliuta, Gary Willis, and this guy named Steve Tavaloni called Audio Mind, and we used to uh, we used to play at this place called uh, Le Cafe. It okay. was a it was a place you know it was a local place. Everybody played, I think, seven nights a week. And um, we were kind of famous there because we would we were the anti-smooth guys that was starting to come happen in L.A. You know, it was all starting to come up. We were not about that. We would actually, like, um, not that anything's wrong with that, but we weren't into that. We would improvise whole sets. We would just go. Ooh. Electronics, you know, uh, you name it. We just, we were kind of like coming from where Miles is attitude was you know you play what you know you play what you hear so um of course because Vinny was in the drums all the stick heads pardon me but drummers uh would come to the gig and Vince was playing with Miles and, and working for Miles at the same time that's right <laughs> stick heads unite 
crowd stick. And him. they would <laughs> hang out in the corner, you know, behind Vinny. You'd drive him nuts because he'd be like, "Oh God, I gotta," pee. you know, uh, and and check him out, you know, rightly so. And uh, I got to know Vince uh, also uh, through that and his Chicago connections, Michael White, Ray Fuller, you know, the list goes long, long. Right, right. And so we got to be friends. And one night after the gig, he said, man, you should make me a tape. I'll give it to Miles. So, you know, I was like, mm. so no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. But so I went home and um, I just did like we did on the gig. I improvised. I had a, this Elise's HR 16 drum machine put on a groove, my D550, my, you know, my rose or whatever, and just yep. kind of went and then stopped it and then gave it to Vince the next time I saw him and kind of put it on my mind, you know, because uh, I, I, you know, that's not something you want to hold on to. Right. right. So um, I don't know, man. Wasn't that long. A couple months later, Miles called the house, you know, you got the call. You got, got the, the call. Miles call. Hey, Bees, did you, did you, did you believe it was him when he, when he called? Cause a lot of people well, don't believe it's mine. Yeah. I was, I was out of town. So um, okay. Catalina answered the phone and, uh, okay. And then she called me and said, I, Miles Davis called you, you know, and here's the number. And I said, no, nah, man, that's somebody else, you know. <laughs> so so I called the number and he said, hello. I said, um, I speak to Miles. He said, is this is John Beasley. Oh, you're a bad motherfucker. You want to come? Oops. You want, you, you want to come join the band? And my, my reaction was, are you sure? <laughs> I mean, totally wrong thing to say. Right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's too funny, man. And that's so. When was the first time you linked up? The first time I saw Miles, or first time after 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 that, you got after the call? The what was the first gig? Um, the first. Well, uh, we spent about two and a half weeks rehearsing in New York. Okay, you know. Flew and you out. actually, yeah. I just I just interviewed Sonny Rollins for this serious show I have on Charlie Parker, mm -hmm. and um, I reminded him that we we were rehearsing with Miles. On was it 21st Street, New York, 20th Street, yeah. somewhere down the SIR, and uh, SIR, yeah, yeah. And Sonny was rehearsing in the next room, and uh, Miles wasn't there for the whole rehearsals, especially in the beginning. They were just kind of teaching me the music and stuff, and he would come in later in the afternoon, you know. And at one point, we we're all breaking at the same time, so we're wow. in this little hallway with Sonny and Miles, and they didn't say a word to each other. But they were kind of looking each other down and smiling and, mm -hmm, mm. you know, like, <laughs> like, like communicating on a whole on another level, level communication you know? on another you level. Know? Yes. So I reminded Sonny of that. And he, he had a big laugh about that. He remembered that. Wow. And then you went on tour. Yeah, I went on tour. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on um, live around the world. Yeah. Uh, I think that's on Warner Brothers, maybe or something like that. Yeah. Well, and amazing. then. um my daughter was born, so I, I came off the road, and you know I have to say every time I I went and saw him, every chance I got after that, yeah, and um, I always felt like I was still part of the family, you know. Yeah, being in the studio with him, you know, was it what you had imagined? What was it studio record? Is live record? Oh, right, right, yeah. No, but when he flew you out, when he flew your... you out to New York for the first time, oh, oh, okay. and you were, yeah. Yeah. When you were in the studio that first time with Miles, right. man, what was that experience like? Well, um, you know, I had heard all the stories, right. blah, 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 you know, and, and, you know, I'd already spent a fair amount of time playing with Freddie Hubbard. Yep. It was no joke when it came to being serious about Absolutely music. Absolutely not. A bad, and, bad and, yes. And yeah. other people, Stanley Clark. So I've been playing around a bit. So I, I just kind of made it in my mind that that when I met him face, face to face, that I would just kind of look him at the eye in the eye, and so that so he knew that I was serious as him, maybe you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, we kind of looked at each other like that, and he had these, you know, his eyes were amazing, man. <laughs> they were dark, but they had these blue rims. They were gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, gorgeous rings, dude. blue rings around his eyes. Blue rings around his eyes. And I was like, whoa, yeah. man. You know, I was like, yeah. uh oh, I'm coming in. Um, <laughs> and um, and uh, after a while, I mean, he just held it there. And I did too for, seemed like a long time. And then he just smiled and he put his arm around me. And that, that was it. Wow. So, so, you know, he was hard on me like he should have been. 
but it was everything Miles said was the truth. Yep. And and sometimes even years later, like even now, I'll go, oh, that's what he meant. Maybe that's what he meant. You know, wow. his, his his wisdom gets 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 imparted like years, sometimes years later. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the way it sinks yeah. in. Yeah. Was there any was there any one sticking point? You know, one thing you took away from that session? You know, some knowledge that Miles dropped, like an example of a lesson that sunk in later. Yeah. Um, one time, and he, he would say things to everybody, mm -hmm. not everybody all the time, but he'd have something to say to you for each show, usually get called in, into the dressing room or just before you go on. Because he would listen to show tapes every night. Yeah. And he was mm -hmm. super dedicated dude, man. Um, and, and have something to say. So right before we go on, like we're in Italy somewhere, he grabs me and said, if you can't come like a Jamal, then don't play. <laughs> wow. Right? So wow. I'm thinking, you know, I'm trying to think real fast. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. It's like I'm thinking, thinking, well, I only heard Amon Jamal comp for a bass player. If okay. that, you know, yeah. trios. Yeah. yeah. You know? And then I thought, and then, you know, I played a gig. And then, you know, the other thing is he would say, he sometimes he'd come grab my left hand because he never wanted me to, to use my left hand when I solo. Mm. So sometimes he'd kind of grab my left hand when I'm solo. I was like, okay. Wow. You know, because he, he wanted to create space. Right. And piano players have a way of reacting to themselves. So right. that's a mm. chunk of space that should have room for somebody else to react to or no reaction, right? Mm. Comp for yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, um, so, you know, during the tour, I keep thinking about what he said. And I think what he meant is that Ahmad used to come in big with the, with the statement. Okay. And then leave. Yeah. And then M, and then leave, you know? Like, yeah. mean what you say. Yes. You know, pick your spot. Right. And mean what you mm -hmm. say. And then, and then, you know, he's, he's a, ma a mod, even though he didn't write for orchestras and shit, he was a, a master orchestrator, the way he played, mm -hmm. you know, all his mm -hmm. tunes had this, this incredible form to yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, very cool, hey, man. Hey, Beast, I got a question. What about when Uncle Miles played the Oberheim or the DX7? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, would you, would you, I know you were listening. What was that like? This chord? Yeah, was, to yeah. hear him at the keys. Yeah, because he would, that Oberheim was facing me. Wow. So when he would play that thing, he'd be looking, you know, through his glasses. And, <laughs> right. You know. right. And, and um, um, he started doing that. He said, especially at first, he was saying, well, I'm going to start feeding you. Wow. Wow. Right? Yeah. You Big know? bet. So he played these really dense, nasty chords, man. They were cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. voicing. And, but, mm -hmm. I think what he wanted me to do is play short, mm. funky, you know, mm. Okay. Mm. do little jabs and stuff like yeah. that. And mm -hmm. he look at me and, he, and I go, and I would start playing what, interpreting what he wanted me to play. And then mm -hmm. he'd go and start playing. And I would just kind of, mm. you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, mm -hmm. is that not a, that's a hell of a lesson, man. <laughs> yeah. he, 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 like a set, like a setup, right? Yeah, like a pocket, you know, like yeah, a pocket, yeah. like a rhythmic yeah. pocket, yeah. but with a with a tonal center, different kind of tonal center that he wanted to use. That's beautiful, okay. man. Okay, okay, okay. Like two boxers, bobbing and weaving. Mm. And and Vince Miles always played keys, right? I mean, like we studied piano from the beginning. He could yeah, play keys, right? right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Of course. Yeah, yeah. He said there's he a, said there's a right? record. There's a record I just saw, um, a bird record. Because I'm doing this Charlie Parker thing. Yeah. Well, Miles playing piano on it, actually. Oh. A lot of those guys, Dizzy and Miles, they would comp. That's you know? right. Yes. Yeah. And get these uncredited piano, uh, you know, mm -hmm. on the record. It'd be them playing piano, but they wouldn't get the credit. Yeah. I mean, they all, to be that sophisticated harmonically, I mean, you know. Well, yeah. and he, he, was, he stressed, and, you know, it's imperative to learn the keyboard, learn it so you can know your way around the, you know, the piano right. and the chords and things that are played, you know. Right. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's serious. Yeah. Serious. And now, uh, John, you mentioned, you know, having seen Miles. First time you saw Miles, was that, you know, before you had become really established on the scene when you were just, you know, cutting your teeth coming up uh, or after? When did you first see Miles? 
I first saw Miles uh, with uh, the Man and the Horn reunion tour with Stern, oh, okay. Al Foster, Alex, I mean, uh, uh, Marcus, Bill Evans. Yeah. Mino, Mino. Maybe? Yeah, Mino, Mino was yeah. in the back. Uh, at the Hollywood Bowl. Cool. About wow. 1980. Was that 1980, man? Something like mm -hmm. that? 81, something 1980. Like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 81, yeah. Something like that. And, you know, he had... He'd stopped for about four or five years or something like that. Right. So everybody was like, hey, man, we're going to see this, you know. Right. It was a big, it was a big thing. It was a big yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I imagine, you know, it almost goes without saying, Miles, I'm sure, was constantly swimming in your ear as a, you know, young composer, pianist, you know, a ranger coming up. Uh, but I'm curious, you know, as to, we know Monk is a big influence. We know Miles is a big influence. But just to drill down a little bit, you know, into your own, uh, you know, style and lone listening habits, who else were you studying, you know, as a student coming up, per se? Uh, well, in the beginning, it was Thad Jones and Mel Lewis mm. and Walking in Space, Quincy Jones. Yeah. From the very beginning, like uh, the Midnight Special, Jimmy Smith, Bobby Timmons. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, I got I got turned on the Maiden Voyage, you know, and that took me on a whole nother journey. You know, I discovered Freddie, yeah. and Tony, and all those other guys through that. And then, in a way, of course, I knew who Miles was, but got into Miles that way. Gotcha. Uh, kind of through know, the Herbie School. Through the Herbie got School. Into, yeah. Yeah. And and. Uh, Train. I wore that record Crescent out and yeah. live at Birdland. Um, and then, you know, in jazz, you know, you kind of get to that thing and then you go, oh, here's McCoy playing with Stanley Turrentine, you know. Right. And then you get turned on to Stanley Turrentine or, and Dexter yeah. and you go back and then, you know, I mean, I always knew about Bird because and Miles because my dad was was always playing that music around the, the house. Uh, so, so Bruce, were you uh, checking like, like, Bill Evans and Ray Earl and Winton Key and all of those you know, out, of, out of the Miles camp too. Yeah, but um, not so much Bill Evans. I was kind of a reverse racist man. I, yeah, you know, yeah. I was like, I didn't want to yeah. hear any white guys. That's <laughs> that's terrible. But that's the way. Oh, okay. It's kind of way. Mm. I hate to say it, but you know, I, I don't know. I just, I mean, later on, I got into Bill, and of course, but for me, it was mm. it was always horn players and drummers. Mm. Okay. You know? That's interesting so. to hear, man. And yeah, I, I find that's also very common. Um, you know, is that your vocalists hugely influenced by you know instrumentalists, saxophone players, trumpet players, ditto for guitarists. You know, yeah. and yeah. because you got to listen to you know outside of your instrument, you've got to listen to outside of your own style. If you're influenced by somebody, you got to listen to what they listen to. You know, it's and that's yeah. how you avoid sounding like a copycat. You know. Yeah, and I like those lines that those horn players yeah, play. So yeah, I yeah. try to learn those lines. And then, of course, uh, you know, Weather Report was, you know, that we're talking, that's my generation, Weather Report, yeah. and Headhunters. Uh, you know, and those guys paved the way for you to be able to be, uh, have one foot in traditional and acoustic jazz and still learning that, and also get in electronics and, and, funk and other rhythms and and you know it was wide open back in those days you yeah. know yeah. Um, you know and, and that helped me it still helps me to this day to have a career you know i could go to a session and feel pretty confident playing any kind of music because of that because okay. of guys like herbie and miles and yep. chick joe zavanil yeah Gina has a great question. Uh, you know, she says, since you've been doing all these interviews regarding Bird and his Centennial, you've got the Bird at 100 project. Um, curious how Bird, how Charlie Parker influenced your approach to music. I'd also be curious as to your take on why Bird and Miles were such a great pair and how they compared and contrasted with Dizzy and Miles. Well, you know. Charlie Parker was Miles's teacher, yeah. first of all. Yeah. Right. Miles was studying. Miles was nineteen or something. Yeah. Like that. He was a Fresh young out of guy Juilliard. Yeah. As, or in Juilliard and going. Yeah. Down right. And hanging right. out. You know. At night. Right. And and um, so, but I think Miles learned early on that he had to come up with his own thing. Right. He couldn't compete with the range and maybe the 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 Valak stuff. Or dizzy, or or maybe he just heard it another way. You know, yeah. that's that's awesome. You know, he comes from Clark Terry and Pops, right. and you know, 
more of a lyrical style. Although, man, later on, he's certainly smoking. <sighs> yes. So, Here we so, are. so I think that's the thing with 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 Bird and Miles. For me, um, man, his his sound is so joyous, man. Bird, yeah. yeah, you know, and he found a way to to play blues and 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 still have that feeling, but over like really major kind of not happy, but bright sounding and rhythmically, mm. man, that dude. I mean, if you if drummers just play his solos right now, you mm. know, rhythmically, the guy is just astounding, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And then, well, let's talk about Monk then and when he entered the equation for you. Um, because your stuff with the Monk is drop is brilliant and you know, really kudos to you. The, the stuff you're doing with Monk's work um is really important for the continuation of, of his legacy, man. And not to mention it absolutely swings. Um, so when did uh Monk first enter the equation for you and down the line, what made you want to form this ensemble dedicated to interpreting his work? Well, I got my dad played this, this, uh, this, this record called work with Sonny Rollins. Okay. The, the old prestige record, right? Yeah. And when when we were just little kids, you know, he'd be cleaning they'd be cleaning the house on Saturday or something, you know, you know, and it would it would change the energy of the house, you know. Oh, be like wow. this, this wow, what is this, you know, so different sounding, but so swinging, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. And and um so you know, as I got into jazz, I was always checking him out, uh, underground, uh and playing his tunes, of course, you know. Right. Um, and then I did a record, I think maybe in the mid nineties with this guitar player, Steve Cardenas, um, sure. uh, uh, called 1010. It was just a duo record. And, you know, we, we just, because it was just duo when we were locked into the rhythm section anyway, we discovered that, oh man, we can kind of elongate forms, you know, try different things. So that was sort of the first time I, I got the light bulb that, oh, I can, you know, I can put myself into his music, if you will, right? And then right. I got a, um, I'm almost forgetting the question, man. What's what was the question again? I'm just curious about the decision to form the Monkestra, oh, you okay. know, an ensemble right. dedicated to Monk's work. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, uh, you know, years and years went by, and I got a commission from the Luckman Jazz Orchestra here with Charles Owens and, and Dugu used to play in that band and mm. um uh to they did a night of monk and they asked me to do two tunes ask me now and uh maybe epistrophe not sure and um again here's a chance to like even uh, to put myself into this and and with epistrophe I, I realized oh man I could start and stop I could put an Afro Cuban groove yeah. to this uh, I could change the tempo anytime I want, and it. And the thing, and thing about Monk is that it's like Bach. You know, Bach sounds good in any tempo, man. Yes. And a great. That's a sign of a great composition. And, yes. And, and Monk is like that too. You could put any kind of groove. You could change up his music. You know? And yet, it's always Monk. You know. And it's always Monk. So I had these two charts, and then we started meeting at the Union. You know, yeah. with friends, and and that's kind of how we started, and then. Uh, a book after a while I had like six tunes or something and we booked a gig at the blue whale. And uh, that's the videos that you guys see of Skippy and what are what not that are on yeah. YouTube. And I just kept writing and then eventually had enough for a record. And here we are. Very cool. Vince, did miles ever talk to you about monk? You have conversations with Monk cause they, you know, they play together. They recorded together. Um, did you ever get his impressions of, of Monk's style, Monk's playing? He never, never mentioned it. He never talked no. about it. Yeah. But, but you know, I know that he, he, he had admiration for Monk. You know, mm -hmm. um, but, but funny you ask because I used to just sit at the piano and ask him just to play chords. That's it, just voicings and chords. Yeah, and he would play some of the sweetest things. You know, just moving around the key, you know, the piano. Yeah. And then but and then he said, Okay, that's enough of that, you know. And then just move, you know, he never liked to look talk about you know the the uh, those the cats, you know. 
for, oh, some, yeah. for whatever, whatever reason. You know, but I, I know that he had admiration for Monk and of course Bird and Disney and, yeah. and all the cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, John? You know, hearing those records of them together, um, you know, what do you hear uh, in musicians' ears when you hear someone with such distinct styles like that, Miles on the one hand and Monk together, kind of trying to blend those styles together? What do you hear? Well, there's that famous story of um, them recording together way back in the early days, I think with Mill Jackson, maybe. Yeah, right. Uh, and I think they were playing Well, You Needn't. Maybe. Okay. And Miles asked Monk to lay out. He, mm -hmm. he, he wanted to play open, mm. you know. And um, there was there was a little tension about that, you know. Um, I could see how Miles wanted it more open than Monk played. A lot of times Monk would keep playing the, the melodies behind soloists and stuff. And, right. and another thing that both Freddie and Miles used to tell me when I would be comping for them, yeah. is, don't feed me. Mm. Don't feed me. Don't lead me. Yeah, when they, yeah. Singers say that a lot too. Don't lead yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And yeah, and I yeah. think the way Monk played, you know, Monk comes from Duke Ellington, man. He's he's like steeped in that tradition, you know, where, you know, it's it's not like Herbie where you're react, reacting and, you know, right. it's it's it wasn't such a give and take with Monk, maybe especially on that date, maybe right, right, right. So so I could see how Miles would just want just to play by himself for a little while, you know, that space, um, yeah, in space. I, I asked Wayne. No, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, after you, because I, I want to. I want to add to that. Well, I'll talk about this later. You, you go first. No, no. I, I mean, when you say space, beast, because I, I would hear him from all the all the piano players. You know, all the keyboardists. Space. You know, just yeah. Don't feed me all those things that you just brought up. You know. Yeah, this whole thing about the lock. You know, play block chords. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much play dense. It mm -hmm. was don't use both your hands to play right, two right. different rhythms and fill up all the space. You know, just use that yeah. or one hand, you know, or, yeah, you know, yeah. 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 And all those yeah. cats, if you listen to them from Red Garland on, Keith, Chick, mm -hmm. yeah. Herbie, you know, mm -hmm. from that, uh, Winton. Uh, mm -hmm. What, what, what are you going to say about thing. Wayne? Well, uh, so I also interviewed Wayne. It's This show is on this Thursday on Sirius XM. Okay. Cool. Three, to, three to six uh, Pacific time. And uh, it's you know we're celebrating Bird. So I asked uh, Wayne if Miles ever talked about Bird, right? And he said not much, you know. But he did say that when Bird would bring in a tune to rehearsal, it would be complete. You know, mm. he wouldn't be still writing or let's do this, let's do that instead. It would just be done. Right. And he said that because, and then he said Miles was like that. When Wayne would bring in a tune, mm -hmm. he he rarely changed anything. But when other guys would bring in tunes, um, you know, he'd be messing with it and, and and trying to find help them arrange it. I guess in a way, you know, right. he, Miles was a master orchestrator, right? You know, mm -hmm. the way he had those guys playing on Nefertiti and stuff like that, you know, everybody had a role on every tune. It was, that's a masterpiece, man, of yeah, orchestration, right. a yeah. small band orchestration, Nefertiti, mm -hmm. man. Um, so I say that because, um, um, you know, the, the example is freedom jazz dance from the evolution of groove where you hear them in rehearsal, breaking that tune down, you know, the way Eddie, the way they started is the way Eddie, uh, sorry, uh, Eddie. Chicago, Eddie, Eddie Harris. Eddie Harris, Harris, thank you. Right. You Eddie know, Harris. He played it all at once. Miles, you know, if you listen to that track, he's like, he's not feeling it all at once. And he can't figure out why. It takes him a minute. And then, then he spreads out, he puts a groove, a four bar groove in between all those phrases. Right. And it's the hippest thing in the world. And <laughs> nobody plays it straight through anymore. They play it right. like Miles. Right. Yeah, he had the orchestrated right, 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 right. mind. Was he, was he 
Vince studying, you know, because I know a lot of those early architects of Bebop, Charlie, Dizzy, Bud Powell, they were really students of kind of the modernist classical stuff. I mean, steeped heavily in that. Was Miles as much a student of, of that kind of work? You know, modern classical, your Stravinsky's, your Debussy's. Because Gina has a question, who would Miles listen to when just hanging out? And I imagine that a, there was a lot of classical in the mix. You mean just hanging out at home or just hanging out as, as he was coming up? Well, I'm kind of pigging, piggybacking off her question. Gina, thanks for watching, Gina, wants to know, who would Miles listen to when just hanging out? Um, hey, hey, Gina, I know, we know Gina. Um, know, Gina. At, home, at home, it would be whatever was, was current. You know what I mean? He, he, like, like Aaron, my cousin said in the documentary, he wouldn't have any of the old music in, in, in the house at all. I, we, lived, we lived together with him in Malibu, Aaron. And um, it would just be what was happening on MTV or if Prince would send a couple of songs or George Duke would send things, you know. It was just what was happening then, you know, that, at that day, that day, that time. So, you know, it's hard to, 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 you know, he, he, I wouldn't even bring it. One time I had a cassette of the quintet and he took it from me. You know, I had a walk <laughs> with it and, and he heard me playing it on my walk when we were in a car, in a, in a, in a, in a car going to the airport. <laughs> and uh, he said, oh, he said, what's that? And then he could hear it. And I said, man, y'all were burning. It's the quintet, you know, with Herbie and Ron and Tony and Wayne. And so he took the cassette out of the Walkman and never gave it back. Yeah. So I don't know if he took it, so I wouldn't listen to it he to get into that right. frame of mind, or that he wanted to listen to it, or mm, you know, all right, maybe he yeah. checked it out again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never know, you know. But I mean, I asked him. Actually, let me just if you got time for one more, one more little story about him. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, oh yeah, man. I mean, I've worked with a lot of really amazing artists, but I, to me, Miles was the most dedicated artist that I knew, mm -hmm. um, we'd be on the road, you know, mm -hmm. and he would have, you go to his room, he would have paintings on the floor, you know, and he'd be, he, at that time he was doing these sort of uh, uh, acrylic powder stuff, you know, on the floor mm -hmm. like that. His trumpet would be on the couch. He'd be talking to uh, Jason about some new wardrobe, some new, fashion thing he wanted to get together for the show it, and he would be listening to the show tapes every night and and i asked him you know uh did he did he check like you know classical guys out and all that right, stuff? right. If i'd heard that he did right and he said he said stockhausen was his man at that moment ah, it was 1989 so he's listening okay. to it. that's some deep heart that's like yes. those chords he would be playing that's you know? what i'm saying yeah 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 and and then then he would he had this Walkman cassette that he would make these cassettes on, you know, and it'd just be pieces of stuff he liked. Hmm. Like he he was listening to this like, this uh, this Caribbean band called Kasav. Okay, wow. They were like a Kasav, funk. Yeah. Yeah. You remember those guys being? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, he, would, yeah, yeah. he had this one passage he would like, and he listened to that, and then rewind, listen to it again, just little pieces. Wow. And then he had some other stuff. I never really get to hear that, but he would he would have this piece of of a melody or something, and he'd pick up his trumpet and he would he was working on that. So it'd just be little short little pieces, like of, a sound collector, like a musical scrapbook, just all these sounds. Yeah, that's oh, that old age, adage: when you when you practice, you don't need to practice the whole bloody concerto. <laughs> practice the part that either yeah. you like or the practice the part that you need to practice on. Yeah, a lot a lot of times that he would he would record we would record. And he would just, like you said, be, he would hear a melody or something somebody else played, mm. and he would he would like take that snippet and 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 put it in a, on a cassette or or he had these little um uh uh, uh where you di dictate this little little uh, handheld uh, pocket uh, dictator yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. machine yeah yeah and he would he would, he would catch the, the phrase of the melody and then he would play it. And add it, or or build a song around it, or anything. You know, mm -hmm. it was it was pretty incredible. Like he says, how how he would dissect and pick things out, and you know, and and try them. You know, wow, microscopic. Yeah, and and on the yeah, road, John, are you, 
Are you saying that he would like a football head coach go back and watch, you know, or listen to uh, the tapes from every night's performance? Seemed like it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I actually went to his room one night after the concert because I just wasn't, I didn't know how to fit in somehow, you know? Okay. And, and he answered the door and said, well, listen to this. And he started playing stuff and, you know, from that, that show. And, and those guys would give him board tapes and he would listen. He'd be on the airplane or on the bus Mm -hmm. or something. Did he do that with you, Vince? Yeah. You were were about three or or four years ahead of me, right? Yeah. Yeah. But he would, yeah, he would have, he would have tapes. He would listen to tapes on the plane in the hotel yeah. room. He'd make sure he'd had a a, a player in, in each each uh, city we were in, and he would. But bees, he used to call us up individually mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. tell us what to play the next show, the next night. You know. Yeah, he used to do us at, at you know after sound check between the gig and sound check, go to his room, or you know sometimes we're all crowding around right before we go on stage or something. Yeah, but it was it, yeah. it was it was always about the music. You know. Yeah, yeah. Always. That's dedication. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. yeah, it was an international tour you did with him, right, John? Yeah. 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 You're, Would he were there any on the, the town moment but uh, t- on the town moments when you're traveling with Miles? Or was it, you know, all music? Was he out on the town? Yeah, yeah. did he ever take the band out? Would you, you know, was no. there any? Yeah. He wasn't feeling that great, man. You know, yeah. That's the other thing about his dedication. Yeah. I mean, there would be a cot every night mm. off stage. And if he felt like point. he had to go lay down during the show, he would go wow. lay down during the show and come back and play more. Wow. Yeah, he wasn't feeling that great. Yeah. But, but still, music but, dedicated to the music, you know, that's incredible. Yeah. We're playing that's his incredible. ass off, though. Yeah. <laughs> Till the end, man. Till the end. Yeah. The hey, end. uh, yeah. John, I would love to hear about the new record because, again, Monkestra plays John Beasley. Uh, again, kind of a new approach for this one. These are the bulk of them are your originals. And remind everyone, when, when's this album coming out? The album actually was released it last was released Friday. Saturday. Yeah, and um, that's right. So, yeah, it's out. You know, just to where, just about everywhere you can buy a buy a record or a CD or a, or stream. And uh, it was put out. It's released by Mac Avenue Records. Yep. You can go cool. to their website and, and order the CD as well. Right on. So why the decision to include some of your own tunes on this one as opposed as opposed to strictly uh, interpretations? Well, the you know, the band, uh, well, for one thing, I've always composed. I mean, I, yes. even before I really got into piano, I was in arranging and composing, you know. And, and so uh, in the band, you know, it's the band is called Monkestra mostly – it's about the spirit of Monk's music and and, and mm. the spirit of of his openness and brilliance and sort of audacity, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, to do two, three whole, to do three records of all Thelonious Monk, you know, I think there's time to do another all Monk <laughs> record. So, yeah. and I was really, uh, and I don't play, I didn't play piano much on those those records. And it was time for me to play again That's man, right. and write That's right. and and sort of write for the band, you know, uh, and write, be, be the composer for the band this time. And, and um, I, di- I didn't, I didn't want to be beholden to a certain instrumentation, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I did two records of just that, you know, yeah. and it's about evolving. It's like miles, yeah. man, you can't, can't you gotta keep you gotta keep moving man and uh um, can't so, get locked in dude. no you can't get locked in you know <laughs> so i was hearing different stuff and and uh um you know we'd been touring a little bit with the septet a monkster septet just because not every place you play can afford 15 hotel rooms 15 flights yeah you know? right so so we're we have a seven piece version of the band and so they're on four tunes of, of the record and um uh, with four horns and then there's a trio tune i was actually talking on the phone with with patatucci and uh you know before we made the record and talking about wayne i was asking how wayne was and so I, as soon as i hung up the phone i went to the piano and wrote this tune called beautiful uh mm-hmm. for wayne b-e dot y-o-u dot t-full right yeah. 
which is something Wayne always says, be you, right? Mm. Uh, so that's just a trio tune. Um, and I just allowed myself to, to kind of be in the moment and write however I wanted to write this time, you know? Um, Very nice. Yeah, it's a lovely record, man. Um, it's great. And again, people watching, it is available uh, for streaming and purchase right now. Uh, let's go ahead. And, and now is the time, especially to purchase these albums. Uh, so yeah, it's a great yeah. record. Uh, Lorna is reminding us, yeah, I got five stars in Downbeat. So congrats on that, man. Yeah, so it's yeah, a really, really nice yeah. record. Really I nice sent record. you a, a, a screenshot of that when I read it in the movie. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, Vince. I, I grabbed, Vince, I grabbed right off iTunes. Vince and I have been friends so long, and Vince, you've always been so supportive of me, man. I wouldn't be man. here right now, man, because you got me to gig with Miles, man. I gotta say this, uh, uh, bro. Whenever bees and I play together, it's it's a certain comfort mm. that I get when I when I know the bees is on. You know what I mean? Because I don't yes. have to worry, and bees will give you a look like I got you. It's, it's 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 really uh, amazing how when you when you when you go on stage with someone, you don't have to worry. You could just explore right. and do whatever you want. And the more I get loose, you know, instead of just playing the groove and I, I stretch, bees give me the smile like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's fun, you know, it's fun. We travel the world and great yeah. restaurants, and and it's always about the music. And, and, and the camaraderie and the brotherhood and the way Miles has touched both of us or touched anybody that, that, that's played with Miles, you know, been a part right. of Miles. Yeah, right. that band is full of alumni <laughs> guys, man. And we yeah. the stories yeah. are going. Yeah. The Miles Davis down. alumni band. Yeah, the electric band. Yeah, the electric yeah. Band, yeah. And, and it's, a, it's a special fraternity, you know. You know, I talked to Ron the other day. And everybody's got the cool stories, you know. Yeah. You know, Ron yeah. said that's... that you know, Uncle, Uncle Miles was the head chemist. And they were just, yeah, yeah. you know, putting all these ingredients in this, you know, in, in this laboratory. And that's that's Ron Carter. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I've been learning, John, is that once, you know, you play with Miles, from talking to Vince week after week, it's like, the, Miles was really cultivating, f like, familial relationships, family relationships. And, and, and having played with him, it's like you become part of Miles' family. Um, and it sounds like that was certainly the case for you. JB, yeah, I kind of pinch myself. Hey, <laughs> doesn't it, doesn't it make you fearless to bees? It doesn't. It, you don't want to get yeah. stuck. You don't want to. You know. You, you don't want to be. You know. You you want to evolve. You know. Yeah. And well, that's, that's, go ahead, B. Well, like you just said, you know, when you when you start getting loose, when everybody gets starting loose, that's when I, <laughs> you know, that's where <laughs> I live. You know, and yeah. because of of Miles and, and the music that he explored, man. Long before me, mm -hmm. long before mm -hmm. you and me got there, mm -hmm. you know that yeah. was his thing, man. He inspired all those guys to be like that, Herbie, yeah, Chick, uh, you know. And I guess you know, actually, Sonny said this the other day. He said that because he played on Miles's first record with Bird, mm -hmm. it's called right. Collectors Collectors Item or Collectors something like that, Serpent's Tooth, and and those tunes. And mm -hmm. um, uh, and he said, and he was young, man. And he said, you know, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna be intimidated, you know, because I figured, I figured that th those guys would not ask me to play. They didn't think if they didn't like the way I played or didn't, you know, didn't like the way I played, right? You know, and mm -hmm. and and you got to figure that, man. You know, and that confidence that Miles gave us. Sure, it happened back then, but it still happens to this day. Something you still keep with you that, you know, maybe you, maybe you're in a situation where, or if you haven't played for a while or whatever, then you go, "Hey, man, you know, I'm part of this alumni, man. I, yeah, I can do this, you know." <laughs> and then yeah. frees you up to be loose. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a legacy, man. You know, above and beyond music. You know, this players that now have this confidence and John, you pass that on to, you know, people who listen to you, you know, and, and I try that's to. a I legacy. Got some young man. guys in the band. I'm always talking about this with, 
That's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly right. Well, Takes hey, a lot of- that is a beautiful way to wrap things up. Um, you know, thanks to you both for coming on the show. John, the new album again is awesome. Uh, Monkey Strut plays John Beasley out right now on Mac Avenue Records. People watching definitely gonna want to go check it out. Uh, really appreciate you coming on the show today, man. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for having me. It's a great show. Hey. You guys are doing great stuff. Hey, thanks, Beasley, what is for you? Hey, happy birthday, with- Kobe, right? Happy birthday, Kobe. We used to go to Laker games together. That's what I was yeah, dropping a little bit before the show started. Yes. You guys Jesus know this chicken. one? There you go. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I got my merch too, man. If they act too oh, yeah. hip, you know they can't play. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That is That's a right. good one. That is good. So true, man. So true. Well, John, well, like I. I'm gonna be I, why I got bees on. I would like to dedicate this this uh, this uh, this show, this Miles Mondays, to Frankie Benali, a drummer with uh, Quiet Riot, who loved mm-hmm. Miles, mm-hmm. loved Miles, and he, we would talk about it. And, you know, he's a rock cat, but he loved Miles, and uh, he made his transition. So you know, we love you, Frankie. I just had to say that. You know? I think That's we fun. we saw the Lakers and the Bulls play, man. We did, we did, we did. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> wow, Michael Jordan era. We're talking. Yeah, in your so, porch. Yeah. In my porch. Yeah. In your cool porch. We said it. We said it to old form. Was, yeah, because yeah, Staples, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Staples wasn't. Yeah, Staples wasn't even built. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Very cool, man. Very All cool. Right. Thank you again. Thanks for having me. Killabee, Our pleasure, Killabee. John. Thank you so much. We'll see you backstage, man. So long. All right, bro. All right. Love All you, right. Bees. Love you. All right, Vince. Hey, another great episode, man. Thank you for hooking that up. Always a pleasure to talk with John Maybe. Beasley. Like I say, the guys ever that vibe that you got from John of just everything's okay, everything's in the pocket, everything's cool. Obviously, you know, performing arts centers around the world feel the same way uh, because the dude is prolific when it comes to musical direction. Like I said, International Jazz Day, countless films, TV shows. Uh, the guy is incredible. And you know what, B, he's, he's just got the level, and he's just cool, you know? He's, cool. he's doing all of these different things, but he's just cool. Right, yeah. right. You know? and, and that's one of the things I love about Killer, I call him Killer Bees, affectionately, Killer Bees. That's absolutely right. Well, thanks again to Killer Bees for coming on the show. Uh, Vince, we're going to see you next Monday uh, with, uh, like I said, we're trying to get Tara Smartin back on the show. We got Mtume coming back on the show. A bunch of guests lined up. But, Christian, uh, Scott, uh, Christian Scott, too, coming up. Christian Scott yeah. coming up. That's right. We are planning, right? We are planning a trumpet summit as well in September uh, to mark the anniversary of Miles's passing. So, going to get the greatest trumpets of our generation on the same screen here. You know, let's give Lorna some love, man. It's JB's wife. You know, That's Kill absolutely wife. right. She That's absolutely really right. Helped. Again, you, for, the merch, for the merch we're wearing, they can check out Miles Davis store, correct, Vince? milesdavis.com baby shop shop to you go and if you are interested in a jazz subscription we're offering a special subscription rate right now 99 cents per month for three months gives you unlimited digital access and our fall 2020 issue is coming out very very soon that would be our art of the album issue there it is uh brought up by our amazing producer jeff there so this is coming out in september this is our print issue don't worry you can also get it uh in digital version too you will need a subscription subscription though and like i'm saying 99 cents per month for three months uh sign up now on jazzes.com all right vince That'll do it for today, man. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Happy Miles Monday to you. Can't wait. So long, man. Bye. Bye.